Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, so today we'll start a new chapter we call it free convection. So um, so remember we have what we have done in the last few weeks, we are talking about forced convection. So I'm going to write down here. So this is forced convection. So Remember, when we study about force convection, so literally we say force convection means we have external force, like we have fan or something to drive the fluid, so it causes the force convection. But for free convection, so maybe you can think it's probably something without external force. But is that right or not? You will find the answer after the study this class today, okay? So um, before we start the new chapter, I want to spend a few minutes to review what we have done before the first convection. So for first convection, the, the most simple example is we have very uh, we have a, a plate here which has a temperature we call it E S, right? And the fluid coming from the left to the right hand side. So uh, we assume the fluid have a uniform velocity u infinity and the temperature t infinity before they enter the plate. And uh, once you get into contact with uh, this, this plate, it will get energy from this plate. So, um, so we will, we will we can find there is a temperature and velocity profile along this plate. So let's first. Um, Talk about the velocity profile. So there is a very good uh, important uh, assumption here for for this kind of a problem is the long sleep boundary condition. It means at the interface between the, at the air and the plate, because the plate is not moving. So at the interface, the boundary you imagine a very thin air layer is not moving and attached to the to the plate. So the velocity along this direction is zero. So, so we know at this point the velocity is zero, the same as the plate. Okay. Point. And when we go along this direction, we call this y. We go along this direction. This is the, the velocity when it's far away, uh, enough away from the plate, should be the same as the air. So we call it u infinity. Right? So this direction, this is the y direction. Okay? So this is the u infinity. The same as the u infinity entering the, the plate. So the, this is a velocity profile for the first connection. Right? Once it is a certain point here, the velocity will not change along the y direction. So this is the point for the velocity boundary layer. So we can plot the boundary layer from the beginning of the plate. It should be like this. So this is the velocity boundary layer. Okay. So this is the velocity. And how about temperature? We have the temperature Ts here. And the, the flow uh, fluid going through is a uh, temperature is T infinity. So let's say the temperature is higher than this. So we take a part of the plate. So this is the uh, this is temperature T X because the long sleep boundary condition is attached to the to the to the plate. So I have the same temperature along the y direction. So I'm trying using another color. So this is the y direction, right? So this is the uh, temperature T, T S. Okay? So same as before. When it's far away from the, the plate, the temperature will be the same as the flow itself. So here is the same as before. T infinity. This is T infinity. So this is the temperature to fire it's like this. Okay. So same as before, once it's uh, exceeding one point, it will not increase anymore. It's the same. 
So it can be like here, it can be the it will be the T boundary. Okay. So this is uh, what we have learned from the first connection. So there are also two important variables we have learned before. The first one is edge, which is the heat transfer coefficient. We use it to define how good the uh, how strong the connection is. So it's a variable to define the, the um, it's not a real physical um, definition, but it's we use to simplify the process. And this one, um, another one is uh, we call it the real number, which is a way to define the um, the tra transition from laminar flow to turbulent flow. And in this situation, usually this number is around five times ten follows five. So below this level, this value is laminar. Above it is turbulent. Okay. So this is a very important concept we learned from the first connection. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll write some equation here, but we will not discuss it because we all have learned it. And these equations, we just use them to solve this get this uh, velocity and temperature profile. But I just put a, um, a few of them here. So the first one, we call it continuity equation, which is partial U over partial X. So this, this one, the first, is a continuity equation. And Along this direction, we have the momentum equation. Okay. So this one is So this is the momentum equation. This is the velocity u, v, this is x direction, y direction, this is density. So, so the last equation is the energy, because we have the heat transfer here. So. So this is a continuity, the momentum, and energy equation. I got here because we will need it later. Okay. So now let's move on the, to the new chapter, the free connection. Okay. So here I bring something. Maybe you can. Thank you. What is it? No. Uh, no idea. We can feed this up. This up. Yeah, close. It's a uh, Pentium 3 CPU. <laughs> okay. Never seen it before, right? It's, it's huge compared to the CPU right now. And this is just plastic to protect the PCB board. And this is uh, uh, the CPU inside. And this is the heatsink to dissipate the heat. So um, this is a uh, this is the example. You here use free connection. Okay. So you see there's no fan outside. Okay, no external force. Okay, and uh, another example is like here right now, uh, the warm inside is very warm, right? And uh, we don't have windows here, but if you have window and outside is very cold, when you get it close to the window, you will feel like wind coming out, right? But you might wondering, we have no like fan over here. Where come? How come there is wind when we come close to the window to the gas? Because the air inside is hot, right? When con get into contact with the cold glass, there is a um, temperature difference because the um, the density gradient inside this inside the air, so it uh, makes them to move, so it causes the wind. And we'll discuss the uh, the detail inside. This, okay. So this is basic idea. See, we have a lot of free connection in our daily life. And 
the important um, factor in causing the free convection, like I said before, is temperature difference. Because you have temperature difference, so you force uh, uh, the gas, like the air here, to have the temp uh, density gradient. And this density gradient will give the free convection. But the density difference is not the only factor in causing the free convection, right? So imagine if you are in a like outer space, this vacuum over there, and there's a temperature difference, right? Can you still feel the free convection? <coughs> in space? It? Yeah, outer space, in the vacuum. But no, but there are no fluids. There are no... I, I guess, uh, I just imagine they have fluid over there. You mean, say that again? You mean, I, I mean, for, for, the, for the classroom, you have temperature difference, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because I know that. You mean the, the, wind, the, right? the space. Right. Yeah, space. But in the outer space, okay. there is no, I mean, we assume outer space has, diff has temperature difference, right? Mm -hmm. But still, will it cause, still cause a break convection? Well, <coughs> I guess if I you're in a spaceship with air inside, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. No, I mean, that's outer space. Ah. That's outer space. Yeah. It's in vacuum. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, I would say no, because yeah. there's no fluids around. There are no even if you, even if uh, I mean, yeah, even if you put fluid inside, I mean, it still would not have the free convection because we have another very important factor here is called the gravitational field. Imagine you have a density difference, right? But what caused the density difference to uh, to float? Is a is a is a body force which caused by the gravitational field. We cannot we don't say it, but it's everywhere on the Earth, right? So, uh, so I have a um, like we have two container. We have a, a, this like uh, this is one number one. This is uh, number two. Okay. The only difference is. We, um, it's, it's all uh, insulated, and this is the T2, this is T1, this is T2, this is T1 here. For case one, T2 is, not, uh, is larger than T1. This one is less than T1, okay? So there is on the, on the Earth. So there is a gravitational field, right, for both. And there is temperature difference. Right? Mm -hmm. But is there a free convection in either of them or both of them or none of them? Can you get a guess? Yes. The only difference is that this one is lower one has a higher temperature. And this one, upper one has high temperature. All the same conditions. Which one have free convection? You are All yeah, both of them or either neither of them. Just guess. One. From 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 what I said. Only one, right? Any other guess? The left one. The left one? Yeah, yeah, because that's smart. Yeah, <coughs> only the first container has three commands. Why? Because we, 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 we told before, I told you, like, first we, we need to have the temperature difference to cause the density gradient. And also we, have, we need to have the T here for the body force to, to drive it, okay? So, but for this condition, see here is, this one is hotter. The bottom plate is hotter. So the density here is lower. And the top one is, we can call it denser, okay? So the, the body first will force the one on, on the top to go down, and this one to go up. So this one, ideally, it will move like this, okay? But this one, because this is colder, so they will stay here. And this one's hotter. You will prefer to stay like this. <coughs> so temperature difference and the gravitational field is not a guarantee to have a free convection. You need to have the right direction for the temperature gradient, right? So this is just the uh, example tells you guys where and how the free convection can happen, okay? So Let's return to this, um, the CPU we have seen before, okay. 
Let's go just right now we just focus on the this one the thick the aluminum plate uh, attached directly to the CPU. Okay. So as we learned before the, from the conduction class, the aluminum has a thermal conductivity about three three hundred times larger than the air. So we can assume this this aluminum plate has a uniform temperature. Let's say the same as the chip. Okay. So let's go look at this one. So let's put it this way. So we can have a let's put a, a very um, let's put it here. Okay. So this is we imagine this is a CPU. Put it here CPU. Okay. This is CPU. This is the aluminum plate. Okay. So the heat generally here will come out. So we have the temperature T F. Okay. So the outside, once we put it in the in the computer case, the outside is just air. Okay. So nothing else. So imagine it's just uh, uh, air outside. Okay. So this is a gravitational field, the G. Okay. So if it's hotter and it's colder. Was there any frequency here? From the condition we have discussed before. Well, I guess here the, the, the gravitational force doesn't count because one is not below the other one. It's not like you have hot hot below and cold above. You have the, the hot is but on the left side, not not below, yeah. but the CPU is dissipating heat to this, so it will become harder. Yeah, this is the hard part, right? This is cold, right? So once the, imagine, once the um, cold air coming into contact with this, what will happen? It will get hot, right? Getting, they want to go up, right? Once they get hotter, they go up. So we'll drag the force, right? Mm -hmm. So it's still a spherical over there, right? Mm -hmm. Because the gravitational field just makes the denser part goes down, right? The light part goes up. But once it got contact, once it hit up, like you have a when you go to camp, you have fire, you can feel like the wind coming up, right? Still the same same um, same idea here. So okay. So let's re so this is a photo question here. Let's back to this one. This one, the G is perpendicular to the plate, okay? But this one is parallel to the plate. So for this situation, we didn't consider the G, okay? Because it will just cancel out. So for this one, using the same long slip boundary condition here. So imagine the fluid here, it should be the same velocity at the interface. So the U is zero, right? And when it is far away from here, the velocity is what? It's zero. Because we assume the air is, is is stable. It's not moving. It's uniform temperature. So this is U zero, this is U equals zero. So what's the temperature or what uh, what what's the velocity profile of here? So so this is zero, so the last profile should like this. Okay. So there's no heat here, no movement. And once it's far away from the plate, it's zero. Okay. So this is just same like this one, the last boundary here. Okay. And if we plot the distribution, so we say this is the direction for you, the positive one. So this is zero. And this is zero. Okay. What's the question? Okay. So this is like this. Okay. So this is velocity distribution. Okay. So let's go back to the equation here. So we can compare to say what's the governing equation for this one. This is a continuous equation. So the same for both. For this one, this is along this direction. So what's the difference? Difference here is we have the gravitational force, which we assume this is the positive one. So 
So it should be the left here. So it's minus g in this equation, in the momentum equation. Okay? But for energy equation, it's the same. So compare the free convention and first convention. The government equation, the idea is the same. But the only difference is for this one, the gravitational force is perpendicular to the plate. So it cancels out. But for this one, we have to consider that. So that's the only difference between the free convention and force convention. Now, so I will not go to uh, detail to solve this equation here today, but um, you should learn from this class how to distinguish the uh, free and the uh, force convention, and also how to uh, announce when the free convention will happen. So. Um, yeah, so that's what we're all talking about today. Thank you.